uh, just completely exit out of that. Um, uh, this is where we start tonight. Um, in the last episode, we uh, completed uh, creating a game loop, and we got all the way to the. I mean, this was a big uh, section, but we got all the way. We managed to get all the way through it. We built a framework that has number of that has a score and number of lives. Now the issue is that we're not persisting that stuff across levels, and that's what we're doing tonight. We're finally adding the concept of levels, and there's quite a bit to do there. We explore persistence, tools, integrated workflows in order to close out the game loop. Yes, good. Welcome back. Last time we laid the groundwork for our game loop with Unreal Engine Game Framework. In this module, we close the loop and tackle one of the biggest outstanding issues, persistence. Uh, so we're going to be able to add levels and we're going to be able to persist the score and the number of lives. Yeah, while well, we have lives and scoring, they only exist in the context of a single level. So if we were to actually end the level and, and start a second level, this is what would happen right now. See, so now here's the second level. There, see? Score reset, lives reset. So we have, it's because we're storing data in the player state, which is created alongside the pawn when the level begins and destroyed when we load another map. If we want to have our game more, more than one level, we're going to need a game instance. The game instance stores all info across the entire game. There, see, and he says it right here. Uh, because while it's part of the gameplay, it's instantiated when we first run the game, and it isn't destroyed until we quit. In other words, the game instance persists from level to level no matter what we're loading. It's a perfect place to store data. The first step is to create a custom game instance of our own. Okay, we're entering, we're opening up our project now. Uh, one thing I like to do really quick is to open the git bash right in there and make sure that we don't have any un scheduled changes it should say there nothing to commit working tree clean that's what i like to see so um, it's all set to go uh, this is a good time to back up the entire directory so we're doing a hard backup um done brain 47 said at mr milkman liquid hot chocolate or melted chocolate yeah so we are uh, backing up the entire directory, but then I'm going to remove all the git stuff in the backup. Um, I do this uh, occasionally, see, but I'm only keeping like one or two backups. We are we are backing up in three different ways, and this is one way. Okay, backup three. Um, Prim is all of the one times more hundred and ninety three sounds string. like funky. See, this is our fourth stream. Uh, game three, backup three. So now we just go in here really quick and zap out all the Git stuff because that's a, those were very big folders. Uh, we, we could zap out this. Actually, I know we can zap out the derived data cache, zap this. Um, um, Agreed. But if it's a bowl of liquid hot cocoa, then I don't know. Hey Milton Shield Said, I tried that few days ago. I think it was magic. We'll simulate chocolate in UE5. Yeah, could you imagine simulating <laughs> chocolate? Um, that would be a fun project, like a, a, a game about just chocolate. Like um, like you're building a chocolate base or you're building a chocolate uh, castle or something. But then you have to deal with uh, the sun like melting. And then you have to deal with... Um, with um, it getting really cold and then it becoming brittle and cracking and yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> Making a chocolate bahaha platformer style game. Yeah. At Calvay House of Opera. Yeah, Loompa, 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 I've got another puzzle for you, Todd. See, we can do anything we want and Unreal Engine 5, that the sky's the limit. Actually, I don't think there is a limit. I just said the sky's the limit. Well, no, space is the limit because you can make space games as we've discovered. Yeah, see, like even the backup folder is almost two gigs, so I don't want to keep too many of these backups here. Uh, you know, we're, we're backing up really well. Okay, let's get into Unreal Engine. 
Schokolade. Alte Alte Space. We'll do the Mecha Phoenix boss battle here soon. Yeah, or unspace. Okay, let's just do a quick um, play test and make sure that um, things are still working like we expect. Oh, no. Okay, uh, our lives are over on the left. You see that? Yeah, all of the um, the uh, you haven't done that debug yet. messages are operating correctly. Well, I haven't hit a damn thing yet. Maybe if we uh, there we go there. See, so that's working uh, right there. This right here, I need to detect and fix. See that? Um, there is nothing in the tutorial how to fix that, but I did fix that in a different um, in a different uh, version of this. You know, the offline version. Oh, l let me just show you. Let me just show you. Uh, see how it says uh, lives? It says lives three. Okay, there are two. Now we have two left. Um, the ball is spawning properly. I fixed that too. See now, let's uh, spawn another ball. If it hits in very low angle, it would be never ending. Yeah. There it is. Uh, we are tracking lives and um, in the same level though. See now we have to persist this data. So and then it starts over. See. So we we have all that working right now. Let's go ahead and remember I added the level snapshot. Uh, feature so let's open the level snapshots editor and then we're going to take a snapshot of this level oh it's down here why does it keep spawning it down there there we go i mean fuck uh okay let's uh take a new snapshot yep we'll take a snapshot of this level we'll name it Level 1 decalled. Yeah, sure, sure. Create a level snapshot. There we go. We got another snapshot. Uh, this is just in case we need to reconstruct the level if it blows up or something. Okay, so yeah, everything looks good. Everything looks pretty much how we want it. Uh, here's our void. There's that field. If the ball uh, uh, goes into this box, then it triggers, um, you know, uh, the ball is destroyed and we lose a life. Um, now let's do what he said. Now let's work on the game state. First step here is to create a custom game instance. I mean game instance. Then set it up to store the data we need and allow the other elements of the framework to read and update said data. Um, Stream. Oh, that's a good point. Elder Colvey House said, Oh yeah, I'll fix it. Yeah, let's let's do. Uh, I just said finishing up third game. Let's say finishing up Brick Breakers, '80s arcade game. Good. That's a good idea. There. There we go. Brick Breakers '80s arcade game. And then I have some good tags running. UE5 Unreal Engine. If you search for Unreal Engine now on Twitch, um, I should definitely come up. Unreal Engine 5. I don't come up at all. See, it's like this. Twitch is really sucks when it comes to like trying to find what you actually want. Uh, if I type in UE5, now what happens? Oh, now it shows that I'm streaming. But you have to type in UE5. That is so stupid. It's like uh, Twitch is not rigged at all for this... Uh, um, Boss battle starting in five minutes one. Yeah, we're gonna start the boss battle in uh, in uh, fünf Minuten. Uh, let's do it. So we have to go into uh, pick a parent class and then game instance right down there. Um, what's different? What's different between this and the game state? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the difference is. 
That's a damn good question. Um, I'm going to have to explain it better. Once I have a good explanation of what's the difference between <clears throat> the game state and the game engine, I mean the game state and the game instance, then I'll explain it. But see, we do have, I mean, there's a game mode. See, so we have a game mode and a game mode title. If we go into the game mode, we'll see that there's really not much in the blueprints. Actually, we haven't added any blueprints. This is just a way that we have of, of telling the Gabdurn game uh, what the defaults are. See, see, and we're going to have to go back in here. Uh, you probably mentioned the game instance at some point. This is what we've done. We've added. It's baffled said. Quick Google answer. Hey, it's baffled. What's up? Should track properties that change during gameplay. The game mode. No, uh, we mean game instance. No, we mean game instance. Hey, uh, NXT and GGG Mr. One. Hey. Thanks for following, but yeah, that, uh, it's baffled. That's a decent one, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're talking about the game instance, not the game state. Uh, it's essentially the same thing, right? And game modes are just um, um, uh, just to NXT start a particular level, said, really. Hello, thanks for streaming. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun, and we're making a brick breakers. We're making Done brick breakers based on this. See, one. this is exactly what we're making. We're making something like this, uh, and we're using the Epic's Dev Community's tutorial, and it's I called a minute, it's buff, like Let's Make a Game Brick Breakers. Nice. See. Let's make a game brick breakers. Um, Let's do. This is totally public, and I'm even pushing my Git repo to public GitHub. Yeah, and I'll show you guys that later. See, and then here's our Git. Actually, here's our Git repo right here. And as you can see, we've already added this level snapshot. You know, I don't think we should be adding level snapshots to the Git, should we? Let's see how. Let's see how um, big these are. Where is it? Where is it? Content level snapshots. Level one. Oh, oh, that's not big. That's not big at all. No, okay, yeah, we'll add it. Okay, so just get add, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll add that to be committed later. We're not committing it now, we'll commit it later. Keep in mind, you can commit any number of times. Those are local commits. And then you can push uh, periodically. Like, you don't have to push every single time you commit, obviously. In fact, you don't even need to push to a remote origin if you don't want to. I just decided to do that in case my computer blows up and catches fire. Well, then we can rebuild. We can uh, recover and rebuild. Okay, now let's stop farting around, right? Uh, where is our tutorial? There it is. <sighs> game instance. Platform game instance. No, not platform game instance. We just want game instance. Okay, so let's add a blueprint. Uh, uh, game instance. There it is, right there. Uh, it looks just like he said, too. Okay, so here's our game instance. So I'm going to do BP uh, game instance. There should only be one game instance. So uh, we're calling it BP game instance, but let's see what he called his. Game instance brick game. You don't have to do that. No, let's, I prefer this. See, everything, every blueprint starts with a BP. Storing it somewhere appropriate. It's not an interface. It's an it's a actual blueprint, like a master blueprint. So let's keep it at the top of framework. Okay. Next, we'll need to call our project to use our custom instance set instead of the standard one. So we go into our project settings, maps and modes. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was expecting that. Uh, we go into uh, maps and modes. Oh, it's at the top. Yeah. Now, where is the game instance? Select a game mode. Default game mode, game mode base. 
wait, that's not supposed to be like that. I think our default game mode is supposed to be game mode title screen, isn't it? I don't know. Let's see. Yes, it is supposed to be game mode title screen. Why didn't he have us change that yet? God dang it. Where is the game state? There. There. I think he's going to have us change the games. Nope. Nope. It's not the game state. It's the game instance down here. There it is. Game instance. Game instance class. It's the custom one we just created. Elder Colvey House said, haven't touched game state yet. Okay, so now we, we just told it to override the game instance with a new one we just created. Okay, good. If you haven't, it's a good time to set your editor and game default maps, which determines what loads on launch. Yeah, gee, thanks. If you haven't yet, well, you didn't tell us to, buddy. If you haven't yet. Yeah, editor startup map. Yeah, level one is good. And then the game default map is actually the, uh, the title screen. There. Server default. No, we're not doing servers. Okay. Uh, with all that done, we can set up our game instance. We add two integer variables, which is stored lives and stored score. Then add the BI framework interface to class settings so we can cleanly access the data. Okay. So we, we kind of know how to do that already. Let's go into the game instance. Okay, we're going to add to the class settings. We have to add Darwin the... Darwin 47 said, do as I say, when I say it. Even if I don't tell you. Oh, ha, ha, yeah. <laughs> oh, boss battle in two minutes. Boss battle in two minutes. Get ready, everybody. We're going to start a boss battle pretty soon. And let's see if we fix the Phoenix to where you can actually defeat him. I made it so he doesn't, he, he okay. restores health, but not as much. And, and it's more random. Okay. We add two integer variables, stored lives and stored score. Okay, so we add uh, stored. Yeah, let's call it stored lives. That's fine. And then this is a integer uh, stored score. Those are the only two things that were kind of persisting across the whole game. Okay, and then we have to... Uh, Oh, he's doing it camel caps. Yeah, okay, let's do it since that's like a C++ standard. That's okay. That's that's acceptable. This is considered camel caps where the first uh, variable letter is uh, lowercase, but then every word thereafter is capitalized. That's that's typical. It looks kind of goofy, but there, that's it. Okay, then we have to add the BI framework, and we called it BPI framework as an interface. See, implemented interfaces is BPI framework. There it is. There it is. See, and now we can call these interfaces. We can't drag them in here, but we can implement the event. See, like that. I, I learned that last time. And let's just compile that, save it. Yes. It doesn't show it. it he shows the wrong screenshot. Well, next want to update BI framework with two new functions. Okay. Name the first one BI update store date and give it two integer inputs, lives and score. Uh, and then the second BI retrieve store data is slightly different as it needs to retrieve data from the game instance. Elder Colvey House said, these are functions to retrieve data between levels now. We're going to name these different. Okay, uh, two new functions in the BPI framework. So I, I'm changing the name because then when we see it, we know exactly what it is. Where's our damn BPI interface? A BPI framework. Okay, so we have BPI score update and BPI lives update, but that's only within a level. So we're going to add another function. And we're going to call this one um, sort of like that, but it's not going to be. It's BPI update 
persistent date. I know that's I know that seems overly verbose, but that now we know we're talking between levels. Update persistent date. Um, and give it two integer inputs, lives and score. Okay. Give it two integer inputs, yeah. Lives. It's an integer. Oh, you son of a bitch. If you click this, it like, yeah, integer. Lives, score. There. Uh-huh, live score. That should look like that. Yes, it does. Hey, hey, Haban. We're starting a boss battle now. Hey, Edivan Stevens. We're starting a boss battle now. Exclamation mark boss easy. Okay, now you guys have 120 seconds to join. I'm going to sit it out, but you have to join as warrior, priest, or mage. Dunbrain47 said, join warrior. Okay, so Dunbrain joined as warrior, and that's how you join. You you do exclamation mark join, and then you join as a warrior, priest, or mage. Oh, you were only driving like one hour a week? Ah, got it. Um, also new PRs at Jim and Stevens. Yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely now the strongest I've been in two years. Mostly, it's mostly thanks to my trainer. Join priest. Hurry and join boss battle. Okay, there's hey, half all there's I'm three in. people. Yeah, yeah, like winter is when I really shine because the gym is not as crowded. Uh, the second BI retrieve store data is slightly different. Okay, let's create that function now. Compile save. Uh, so it's called BPI retrieve persistent data. See what we're doing? There is no doubt when I see that word, that means it's across levels from the game instance now. Okay, here we go. Join, join warrior. Hey, Avan join too. Good. Good. Here we go. Behold, the Mecha Phoenix. Uh, let's see what it's called. What did I call it? Oh God, it is. Yeah, and then it adds a bunch of NPCs. Phoenix Sluggington. That's it, the Phoenix Sluggington. Oh God, okay, so who goes first? The bot goes first and then Havan Stevens is next. And then all you have to do is just follow the prompts, okay? Um, you just have to follow the prompts. So it's like exclamation mark and then uh, pick one of the one of the options. See, so like it's now Havan's turn. So he could do uh, exclamation, I mean exclamation mortal strike, demoralize. And if you don't take your turn, should it'll pick one for okay. you. Yeah, mortal strike. Uh, now this guy was impossible before, but I think I made him a little more, um, a little more convincing, a little better. Okay, so we have to update persistent date, and this one he said this one's a little different, is it needs to retrieve data from the game instance. To do this, we need to use outputs so we can output the data. So we add two outputs, lives and score, as with the inputs above doing so, we'll add a return node with those outputs to the function. Leave it as is. Okay, so here's our outputs. No, it's, there, it's this. Yeah, retrieve persistent data is uh, lives integer and score integer. Oh yeah, this is better. So he's healing, he's just not healing as much. That's good. 
good. Elder Calvey House said, let me know if he still heals. He should, but not as much. Um, what is, what is, uh, Crime Solver? 993 said, Demoralize. Demoralize, good. That's a good, uh, selection. There we go. Uh, new parameter. Well, now it should be score. Yeah, see, so it creates a return node. It says lives and score. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. And this is for the retrieve. And then the update looks just like that. See, the persistent dip. Whoa, I misspelled that. Yeah, I misspelled it. Okay. We don't want to misspell stuff. With those in place, we can compile and add our new BI Focus. update stored data to the game's instance event graph and then feed lives and score into the appropriate variables. Okay. Compile, save, and then BP game instance. Let's save all. Okay, now we're in our instance, right? In the game instances event graph, and here we are right here. See, we're in our new BP game instance, and we're going to create this. Dunbrain 47 said, Mortal Strike. Event BPI update persistent data. Why is this grayed out? Yeah, implement event. There we go. Event BPI update persistent data from the BPI framework. It's funny how his doesn't show that. Then feed lives and score into the appropriate variables. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. No, stored lives, stored lives. Screwed that up. Okay, stored lives. Yeah, stored lives. Got it, got it. So now we're going to set stored lives. Yes. And then we're also going to set stored score. See, so we drag these in to the graph and they're both sets. And I think this has to be done serially, you know, like one at a time. See, so you first connect those. Elder Colvey House said, now this is more fun. In fact, it's almost too easy. I might have to, we might have to do yes. normal. We might have to just do a normal boss battle next time. Um, okay, and then we're going to feed the stored lives into here. And then we're going to feed the stored score into here. I think that's how he wants us to do it. Let's see, is that true? Yes. Yes, stored score, stored lives. Then just like that. Compile, save. So there we have our update function available. Uh, update function is uh, up and running. Um, Havan got abducted. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. I love, don't you love those rockets? He's not causing damage though. Weird. Yeah, it's like he's not. Uh, are you guys healing? Are you guys healing or something? Crimis Oliver 1993 said, Mortal Strike. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do some more uh, uh, debugging on this mecha bot. Okay, does he, did he make stored lives and score uh, visible? I'm just chipping away. I don't think I don't think we need to uh, no we don't have to make them visible yet we need to head to the game instance and locally yeah we did that wait we're here we need to head to the game instance and modify our BI retrieve store data interface function he, he means the blueprint I'll see if it's the the interface. Oh, God, this guy sucks. 
yeah, we were just in the game instance. This should say BPI interface, which we, I mean this, see. Next, he said we'll head into the, that and locally modify our BI retrieve stored data. Okay, so this has to, you'll find it under interfaces in the My Blueprint panel. Exclamation mark mortal strike. Oh, maybe it's the, I, I can't tell what he's talking about. It's, it's this, it's the interface. See, BI retrieve stored data, and then um, BI retrieve stored data, that's the return node. La. Feed our stored lives and stored score into the outputs in the return node. Yeah, right there. Stored lives. Cannot create new nodes in a read-only graph. Locally modify. Elder Colve House said, "Damn tutorial again." Next, we need to head to the game instance. We were just in there. I really can't tell where he wants us to be. That really sucks. You suck. Update persistent data and then BI retrieve stored data. Okay, let's, uh, huh, why isn't it not letting us convert function to event? No, dismiss. I don't know what, oh, there, there. Dismiss, 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 and dismiss button doesn't work. Show message log, dismiss, clear, dismiss. Well, anyway, it sort of looks like, no, BI retrieve stored data, uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't know what he wants us to do here. Stored lives and stored score values into the outputs. Now we can have our player state retrieve those values. You'll find it under interfaces in the My Blueprint panel. Oh, what fucking My Blueprint? Interface function. Well, it, we can't locally modify this because it's read-only. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why it's read-only, but it just is. Retrieve. Retrieve stored data. Yeah, functions, read-only. Yeah, I can't. So we can't change this. See? So what does he want? Locally modify our BI retrieve stored data interface function. All we need to do here is feed our stored lives and stored score values into the outputs. Uh, where's retrieve persistent data? Maybe this is it. Let's see what we got. Retrieve stored data. Function. Oh, it's the function itself we need. Okay, retrieve persistent data. Uh, and we're going to overwrite it. Like maybe like this way. I really don't know. It's like a purple thing, but I don't know what. Oliver 1993 said. Slots 1000. See, that's not purple. That's not purple. That's not purple. Elder Colvey House said, we might have to look at our older show game. 
Oh, you, you've been defeated. Participants reward 1,800 gold. Congrats, everyone. Was it too easy? Yeah, that might have been too easy. Um, yeah, see, uh, we're we're at a uh, roadblock I'm here. Not doing good tonight with slots. Another freaking roadblock. Interface function. You'll find it under under interfaces in the My Blueprint panel. I have no idea what you're talking Dungeon about. Forty seven said, "Lot more feather the other night." Yeah, we're gonna have to duplicate this. Uh, there, let's do that, and then let's look at the command. Uh, let's look at the uh, comments. Um, and we and the problem we had was retrieve. Yeah, when he goes to retrieve. A bet he's evil here, but you have to squint to see it move. Oh, you have to. Yeah. Yeah, did he damage you guys? Didn't look like you guys even took any damage. That's what I want to know. There we go. Get game instance doesn't slot into. It needs to be cast into the BI framework or game instance. Got one of the NPC bots good. A bit nothing overly serious. Mostly went after one NPC. Oh, got it. Oh, got it. Okay, there's no existing begin player event scripting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're not getting it. We're not getting this. Retrieve. Store data. Target. Needs to be cast into BI framework or game instance. Yeah, this is the most uh, aggravating part is that, uh, you know, I got this working once, but I know I had to. And then the, the search feature doesn't even work on this damn epic. I don't know why they built it like this. This is so, ah, uh, so stupid. God dang epic. They tried to build this cool, this really, really cool uh, engine, and then they, they muck it up with all this stupid crap. Uh, yeah, let's open up our other one now, okay? We're, we're just going to have to open the other one up and see what I did. You can't open it up from here, okay? This is where things get really freaking annoying. Open project. Where's Tiny Game 3.0? It's not even on here. It's not on here because... Uh, you have to go into the, yeah, because I hit it. There, that's it. Tiny Game 3 Alpha. There we go. Let's see what I did in here. Yeah, we're trying to get through this, and I don't remember um, the correct way to fix his crappy, crappy, crappy explanation. Locally modifier BI retrieve stored data interface function. Okay, let's see what we did here. Content drawer. Now this is this is structured a little bit differently. So um, it's it the framework interface is here. See, we do have that retrieve stored data, and it it looks the same. That's good. Okay, so that part is okay so far. Now uh, we have to go into the game instance. Now let's see. Not request next level, but the uh, the blueprint of this whole thing. Where is the blueprint of this? You know, the whole game instance. Now, I can't find the see. 
See, this has pissed me off too. Now I can't find the... Oh, there's the event graph. Okay. I think this is it. BI update stored data. Yeah, I did that. But then... See, I did not do it in here. So it's not in there. Uh, this is already in here. Remember, you know, we just did this. Current level, current score, current level, current score interfaces. See, this is doing that weird thing too. Retrieve stored data. Oh! Elder Colve House said, aha. Uh -huh. You can locally modify dare function. So that's how he did it. He didn't tell me that. And then his is red. No, no, no. His is purple. There, see? That's exactly what this is. So that's how you do it. Um, you have to double click the interface function. These, these aren't interfaces. These are functions. Why does it say interfaces? These are... Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay, so that's how I did it. Okay, sometimes you just have to need it. Sometimes you just have to open up stuff. Oh, this this tutorial. Dunbreen forty seven said, "Brb, putting away leftovers from dinner." Awful god abysmal tutorial. Okay, man. Oh, um, Mr. Uh, somebody, uh, Crime Solver is, uh, is um, your brooder, is your brooder streaming tonight? Oh my god. There we go. Okay, so now we're, we're back here. Let's uh, go into our game instance now. Newly created game instance. Yeah, we're out here a little bit. You see how I organize this really well? I like this organization much Kim better. Kimizolver1993 said, bit later, but yes. See, you can... Uh, so this is the event graph for the entire kaplip, kaplipadoodle for the whole instance. You can locally modify each of these. See, just like that. Event graph. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go into retrieve persistent data. Here it is right here. All we need to do here is feed our stored lives and stored score values into the outputs in the return node and any actor calling retrieve stored data on the game instance will, re will receive those values. Now, you know, so what we're doing, see, stored lives get stored score get lives score it's amazing we did it that's that's what we wanted yeah no thanks to him now there see so we've we've locally modified this bpi retrieve persistent data function which we created in the interface but you can't you can't log you can't actually um specify you can't customize it in the interface it's just an interface this in the game instance by inheriting and using that interface function this is where you customize it now it makes sense he didn't really explain that now we can have our player state retrieve those values on begin play and update the appropriate ui elements so this is what we need to do now um, uh, let's let's add explanations to these just for the hell of it. Yeah, retrieve stored data via the interface. Okay. Yeah. Well, retrieve. It's actually a retrieve. We'll say this. Retrieve stored persistent data from interface. Data. Um, I don't like how it does that because then you have to fart around with it to get it there. OK, 
Okay, and then at, back at the event, event graph, we might as well give this some kind of description. Uh, what should we say here? What did he say? Data management. Update persistent lives score. I mean, it's pretty obvious what it does, but sometimes it's just easier to read this and, oh yeah, I remember what this does. Yeah, that's that's the idea, see, like that. Okay, now we go into the player state, like he said. Okay, we're gonna go into the BP player state. We only have one player state, and it's the player state bat. I don't know why it really shouldn't be called bat, but let's not change that right now. It didn't open it. It's not opening it. Oh, because it's already open. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are updating score and lives from the game instance. Uh, and update the appropriate UI elements. So um, update score, update lives. Uh, on begin play, okay, connect this to begin play. There we go, so we have to, so this happens between the levels. Update lives within level. See, within the level, and now there's a... Dunbrain47 said, I'm back. Hey. Stay dinner tonight with corn and rice. Ooh, nice. Nice and nutritious. Elder Colvey House said, nice and nutritious. Okay, so now we're doing, uh, now we have to build this. Um, BI retrieve stored data. Mm hmm. See, we've already. In the class settings, we've already uh, implemented the BPI inner framework, so all of our new functions that we just added, they're already here. Um, I don't know if we can implement this. Convert function to event. I think that's what that does. Yeah, yeah, BI retrieve stored data, and then get game instance, uh, and that's the, the self. Okay, get game instance. And this better plug in here. No, nope, of course it doesn't plug in there. Of why would it plug in there? Why, it, that would be too easy, wouldn't it? This has to be a message. Retrieve persistent data as a message. There we go, now we can connect it. It has to be a message. I don't know what that's all about. So now, be event begin play, retrieve persistent data. Let's make sure we don't have any other begin play. No, we don't, okay. Uh, get game instance. Uh, and then these are outputs, lives and score. Okay, uh, what we're doing, we're, um, Elder Colvey House said, this is where we pull persistent lives, score from the master game instance. See, and now he calls this player lives and player score, but that's not, that's not right. That's, it's current score. Current score, current lot. No, it's set. It's not, you know, it's set. Retrieve stored data. Yeah, see, so it already knows that we um, we now have lives and score. This is what it's getting persistently, you know, across the entire game. And then now we're going to use this to um, update the uh, the current score and the current lives on this level. Get player controller. Yeah, so then there's a BI lives update. 
let's implement. Why isn't it letting me implement this? I want to implement the interface. Okay, let's start with lives anyway. Nope, whoops, I just screwed that up. Ding. Uh, ding. Current lives. Current lives, current score. Let's put, get this out of the way for now. Yeah, player lives, current lives. And that's what it is, current lives. And then um, we also have to update the lives. So see, this is the function that will then update the UI. You know, this sets the variable. That's not enough. Now we need to set it. What are we listening to? Pick a game soundtrack. There, I'm I'm playing Shadow of Mordor now. Okay, so BI lives update and then BI score update. Yeah, we have to call those. And I think we have to call them as messages. Yeah, that's what he did. BI lives update. BPI lives update. There's the message. Yeah, see. That's really the only way to do it. And then the target is the get player controller. Let me appreciate how it's going. Don Brain 47 said, one does not simply play a mod or soundtrack. Of course not. The target is the player state. And that's uh, this return value should go right in here. Good, it worked. That's amazing. The target itself, return value is, see, now we're, we're actually uh, tr triggering the function BPI loves that update, which will update the UI itself. And then serially, then we have to do the same thing for score. See, it's the same exact thing. So actually, let's, let's do something like this. We'll uh, just copy this because this is the same thing. And then we're gonna do, um, there's the set. Yeah, set. And then let's despaghettify. You know, we've kind of got 3D spaghetti going on. Let's uh, despaghettify this. There. Current score. Set. Same thing. Set. BPI score update as a message. BPI score spaghetti, update. Spaghetti, spaghetti. <laughs> Elder Colvey House said, Shardy. Oh, whoops, it's, it turned that into Shardy. Now I don't want to eat Shardy and meatballs. Boy, he can't say anything right. And then points. Oh, wait, current score. Well, we did call it points. Yeah, see? See how we did lives and points? Lives. Current lives, set current score, points. Just like that. There it is. Uh, essentially, it's the same thing. Nodes. are a little flat. Okay. Let's uh, make a, what did he call this? Update score and lives from game instance. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh-huh. That's what it is. Update uh, uh, level score and lives from persistent uh, game instance data. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. Uh, I like being really descriptive about this stuff because I'm finally understanding this whole structure.
I hope they don't start singing. The noodle section would be flat. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> script this in your player state and attach it to the end of your begin player event script. And code schnip follows. Yeah, so here's the whole code schnip. Uh, Oliver 1993 said, oh, wait, spaghetti. He changed the code snippet. Look, the code snippet is not the same as what shows up here. Look at that. How stupid. All we have to do is wrap up is activate the level completion logic, but you might have noticed we're missing a big step here. There is no concept within our framework of level completion. Our test map has some bricks that can be destroyed by the ball and increment our score, but if we destroy them all, we're just left to bounce our ball around. That's exactly what's happening. Not all that much fun and not useful. The obvious solution is to track the number of bricks we have, update that value as they're destroyed, and end the level when none are left. And rather than diving in right now, we're going to take a uh, step back a second and think about our play spaces and how we intend to build them. So um, he's going to tell us that we're going to build a tool to make levels easily, and I don't want to do that. We're not doing that. I'll show you what he means, but we won't do it. So on your, uh, let's see. As your game, not on your game, evolves from a simple prototype towards something more complete, it's well worth evaluating a workflow and how extensible it is. What works well for a prototype, that's poor wording, self-contained, hand-built, uh, and likely loaded with caveats. Well, your whole tutorial is loaded with caveats, stupid. Um, well, not necessarily scale cleanly. Okay, see, so um, rather than giving into the temptation and charge ahead, look at the problem and see if we can do some work now to make life easier further down the road. Well, I always do that with engineering, yes, but what he wants to do, he wants to introduce a, a level builder, see? So we, we actually build this custom level builder. Uh, that's what he's having us do, see? And then it makes it really easy to like paint bricks we don't have to do that so we're going to skip the whole tool builder you know we're actually customizing an entire tool see like row distance plane position working column position considering how crappy his tutorial is this would just be another rabbit hole see because he's probably pointing to the wrong stuff he's pasting the wrong screenshots he's telling He's referring to things that don't exist. Okay, now we're ready to spawn some and bricks. I eat caviar. Elder Colvey House said, Imagine what a mess this would be. So, Pass. using the construction script, yeah, la la. Uh, let's get scripting, dividing our widget. 1947 yeah. said, Agreed. So, what he's doing here, he's just, um, this is all to detect how many bricks, but we're going to manually count how many bricks we have for each level. Let's spawn Super some bricks. Robot. Yeah, do end flow control, and then each brick we're spawning is a yeah la 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 treated, and then what? And then this is what he's doing. See, he's just trying to figure out how many bricks. Uh, however, if it does, we're going to increment our working row count and see if it's greater than our total row. We stop spawning bricks. La la la. Okay, there. With that done, now we can get back to our persistent game loop. If we want to be able to complete a level, we need to know how many bricks there are to be destroyed. And that way we can decrement that count with each brick destroyed until the end result is zero, at which point we can activate our victory condition. To do this, we add two functions to the BI framework. So BI brick destroyed and BI brick count update. See, so every time a brick is destroyed, it's going to remove one brick from this. It's going to trigger this and it will uh, reduce it. Okay, so we go back to the BPI framework. Hey, where is it? There she is. Um, we're going to add a, a two functions. BPI brick destroyed. with no inputs because it's just an event like brick destroyed and then it will trigger this bi brick count update and there's an integer input named bricks that's going to be the number of remaining bricks and then we're gonna yeah 
since the events, la la la, brick update, brick count update. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is a supernova of suck. Yep. Elder Colve House said, yep. Okay, and a brick count update. Um, do I wanna I was gonna say bricks remaining, but um yeah, that's good enough. BPI brick count update. With an input named bricks, yeah. Yeah, input named bricks and that is a uh, integer good okay there's our integer let's get these all into one yeah so now we have brick destroyed and then brick count update and as you can guess now we have to do something about brick count and there yeah we're going to gather and send our data via the brick spawner event graph. Since the bricks are being spawned in the construction script, all work is complete by the time event begin play is activated. From begin play, we're going to um, get a simple count of our child actors and send that to our player state via BI brick count update. What? From begin play. But he didn't say where this is. We're going to gather and send our data uh, via the brick spawner event graph. Since the bricks are being spawned in the construction script. All work is complete by the time the event begin play is activated. Okay, okay. So we're going to have to do this on... We'll have to put this somewhere else. Hmm. Update game mode with brick count. We can't put it in the game mode itself. So where would we put this? Uh, BP player state bat. Here, here. Event begin play. We're going to put it right here in the uh, begin play. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, update game mode with brick count. So let me do custom event. Uh, update game mode with brick count. Okay, that's a long name, but it doesn't matter. That's our custom event. Uh, we're and all we're doing. See, we could just we could ignore this and we could just keep adding this to the end of this. But I want to uh, make it a little cleaner. So update uh, brick. What did I call it? Oh, update game mode with uh, brick count. There, update game mode with brick count. It even look what it did. It even um, turned it into a little sentence. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. Update game mode with brick count. And so then it gets over to here, then it's going to fire this. So now we're actually going to swap these around. So it kind of follows logically. Whoops. There. There. Now we do this. See, because it, it, it starts from event, begin play. And this is per level. See, player state bat. Crimis Oliver 1993 said, at Mr. Milkman JK. Elder Colvey House said, 
I think this is the best place for it. The bat doesn't destroy me. Okay, beehive until brick count update. Anyway. Do we have a. Uh, yes, we do have um, it. Bi brick count update. There it is right there. We can implement the event right here. Um, oh, no, 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 no. That has to be a function. Okay, okay. Admit receipts at each brick. Bi brick count update, and it might have to be a massage. And then get game mode. Well, it must be this. Please, please. Oh, good. It works. Yeah, and then uh, what? where's the bricks? Get all child actors of what? Get all child actors of what? That's, that's not going to work. Of our child actors and send that to our player state via BI brick count update. Length. So we're getting the length. Get length. Um, it's not animation. How are we going to do length? All child actors. Okay, now how are we going to... Integer is not compatible with an array of actor object references. Elder Colvey House said, Oh, uh, let's see. Update game mode with brick count. Um, how did he get this length? He doesn't explain it at all. How do we do that? From begin play, we're going to get a simple count of our child actors. Yeah, but how? Which child actors? Be break count update. Oh, child actors. Okay, I think uh, each level is going, I know what's going to have to do, what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to open up the level settings. Officially. Can we solve the 1,993 said level? child actors? What? We need to get in, we need to define... need to define one variable in each level. But how are we going to do that? There is the, oh yeah, it's here, the level editor. There, level blueprint. Okay, okay, there we go. So um, we need to look at our variables. There, I'm going to put marks a variable. Lots 1, Total bricks. And then this is going to be an integer. There we go. And then we have to make it visible. Total bricks, that's how we're going to do it. Okay. Okay, total bricks. And now we should be able to pull this off and do total bricks. Okay, level. Back to our level editor. Open the level blueprint, total bricks, yes variables total bricks and the uh the default uh let's say two because there's two bricks on level 
one, right? Yeah, two bricks, compile, save, and then save all. Now go back to the BPI, I, 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 yeah, back to here. And now BPI brick count update. I don't know why I can't total bricks. Get owner level. Okay, maybe we have to get level. Get level names, get level. There, there, there. Okay, and then return value. Now get game mode. Elder Colve House said, damn it. I have to go back and see how I did it in the offline version. It's, well, this isn't going to... Okay, this isn't going to hurt, but um, um, let's do fix this. There. And then I always do this uh, DLC, Z, Z, Z. So it's easy for me to find this. This is broken. We have to fix it. So BP player state bath. That's what we're working on. Okay, now we go back in here and I have to figure out See, I, I had to do this myself because um, I didn't want to do that brick spawner. That is so stupid. Don't worry, we'll get done. Okay, now, first of all, let's see if I... Now, I have a few levels going. On this one, see there's level one, two, three, four. So let's see uh, if I actually saved. Ooh. Look over down. I was testing out the uh, you know the same kind of um, the same general kind of atmospheric effect that he used, and um, uh, and it's totally doable. Like I'm doing um, like a diffuse glow and um, like atmospheric fog and um, emissive light. Like that's how he did it actually. Don Green 47 said trippy. Yeah, so um, we can do anything we want with these. But anyway, okay, let's make sure I did. Yeah, disco. Now let's see if I, there it is. See, that's exactly what I did here. Total bricks. Ah. At Mr. Milkman in the disco ball breaking the dance floor. Let's just take a screenshot with that. There. Now we got that up. Yeah, and that's level one. Now I know what this is. Yeah. Okay. God, what a, a brain-busting block butt plugger. Oh, das gut. Somebody did something. Who did Who did what to what? Let's see. Young, young Ash followed. Hey, thanks, Young Ash, for following. And then also, Nxtgnster1. Thanks for following, Nxtgnster1. All right, so that's how I did it there. But how did I then call this? See, so then we... Murder on the dance floor. Begin player, get player state. Oh! Elder Colvey House said, well, oh, put the whole fucking thing here in level graph. Crimis Oliver 1993 said, someone say murder. In fact, I think this is the only place that this has to be. Like if I do, if I look for total bricks, total bricks, and then look for every instance where it exists. Oh my God. 
Of course, see, look what I did. There's get total bricks and total bricks, and they only exist once in each level. That's how I did it. And by the way, that's not the only way you could do it. You could create one array in the game state and then remember, I mean, the game instance, and then store the total bricks of each level in an array in the game instance. And that is actually the correct way to do it. Should we try to be brainy and store all total brick info in the game instance too? We, we could be super brainy about it. Because I don't like this idea, you know, I create this once and then it duplicates this function, this code, like every... Otherwise, we're duplicating code with each level. A bit messy. Let me think about that. I'm surprised he does not ask us to do that. Um, and remember, you um, he, we don't have to do that if we use that brick spawner. But see, I don't want to use that brick spawner. I want total control. Control, control, you must learn control. See everything that we changed. Yeah, we've added a BP game instance. Yeah, get add, and then we modified the default engine. Yeah, we uh, modified the player state BPI framework. Yeah, let's add all this. These are all the things that we've modified tonight, and that looks correct. Yeah, that looks good. Uh huh. Yeah, looks good. Okay, uh, back into Kaplipadiddy, uh, Kaplapadoodle. Um, begin play, brick count update, the length of that. Get player state, target, total bricks, bricks. Why did I say player state? See, I use player state, whereas he used game mode. Why did he use game mode and I use player state? Hmm, this is starting to look a little messy. Back in our player state, we're going to create a brick count integer variable in bi brick and then add the output in of that event to the integer. This means that when a brick spawn is finished, it will tell the game mode how many bricks it spawned. Finally, we can have just have our brick called brick destroyed on the player state before it dies. Elder Colve House said, let's start with simpler first. Then I can get brainy later. Because we'll just build two levels to start. Okay. Done brain 47 said. Yeah, because there's too much going on. See, we also have to then um, every time a brick is destroyed, we have to build this whole logic. I mean this is gonna be in the where is this? Pl yeah, in the player state. And and then also in the player state here, see? So, you know, we're getting toward the end of it. Okay, so let's not confuse things too much. You know, let's let's do what I started with. So um, um, let's go into Tiny Game 3. 
Tiny Game 3 project. And we'll keep it in the level, the level blueprint, just like I did before, as a variable. But the problem is I just don't know how to um, don't know how to call that. See, so here's the uh, level blueprint, and we are storing that. See, there's two bricks on this level. Now we just have to figure out how to get this. Oh, and this is where this comes in. See, event begin play, get player state, BI brick count update, and then we feed total bricks into. So now the player state will be aware of this. So all we have to do is just do this. Whoops. Here. Uh, yeah, begin gameplay. I mean, begin play. Yeah, that's it. Event begin play. Um. But if we're going to do that, then we need the interface. And then, so we need BPI framework and then compile. And then that gives us access to all of this. And then BI brick count update. There it is. No. No. Brick count update is a message. And then that will travel you know directly to the uh, BPI framework and then hit the right place. The reason this says player state index is zero, that's you. The, the player in a single player game is zero. Elder Colvey House said player number in a single P game is zero. And then, and then there's our total bricks. See, now it makes sense. There we go. There we go. Now we're. Um, we're sending the total bricks into the player state. So now see what this does. Whenever we start the level, it um, triggers this BPI brick count update, and then it, it takes our total bricks, which is two, feeds it into the target, which is the player state. Now the player state knows how many bricks. So now we should be able to compile and then go back into the um, this. There, fix this there and now we have to do get player state player state um Boy, this is this is a good one. Update the game mode too with the uh, the total bricks. Okay, so we actually we're not we're not done yet. Now we have to go back into this level editor again. So what we updated total bricks, but we did get player state. But um, he's saying get game mode. Now if we do that, what happens? Oh, okay. There, we've updated. Amazon 126 said, hey. Hi, Amazon. Elder House Glad you're here, Amazon. Oh, here. Here, guys. I don't see anybody. Oh, somebody must have done ah, fresh meat. Hello. 
that. Hello there. And we're also going to do a... Oh, you guys must have done a battle royale recently, too. Here, I'll do another battle royale. You guys are doing that. Seven said at Amazon 126 kilo. There's the battle royale there. Let's see if it's working. Yep, here it comes. Said it's been screwy. <laughs> oh, has it been? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now now the game mode um, uh, gets our total bricks, which should be two. Now, how do we know? At least on my end. Okay, game mode. Get game mode. So maybe this was true to begin with. And then um, return value. Wait a minute. Send that to your player state. Yeah, I don't know where to put this. I don't know where to send it. In this one, I did player state. Uh, but do we even... Actually, I don't think we even need to do this now. You know what? I don't think we even need this. Young Ashbeat speak at you, lol. Uh, this won't... Then we don't need that now. Okay, because it's already happening in the level, right? The level is uh, triggering it. Now we're just doing it differently than he is. Then back in our player state, we have to create a brick count integer variable and a brick count update event, then add the output of that event to the integer upon activation. That means when a brick spawn is finished, it'll tell the game mode how many bricks it spawned. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. So now let's go into our player state. Sonic is streaming us. Oh, for, ex for example, you determine a grid and level, and according to a grid randomizing, you add bricks on A1. Elder Colvey House said, yeah, ha, 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 ha. Oh, yeah, and uh, we could even build a randomizer later, but um, um, then I'd have to come up with a better way to count bricks. In fact, there is a better way to count bricks to where you don't have to manually tell it. Like you could just count how many BP bricks are on this on this level. You could just do the count and then send that count. Then you don't have to cust then you don't have to like manually tweak it for each level. Okay, so I think we're we're done there. Now we have to go into the player state. Player state is um there. God damn it, we're in the player state. We're going to add a brick count integer variable. Hi, Amazon, Vink and the Hunt. Yeah, the player state. Okay, player state. Yes. BI brick count update, which we have access to. There it is. Good, now we're implementing the BI brick count update, and then we're going to Amazon add the output just of that event to the integer upon activation. That means when a brick spawner is finished, it'll tell the game mode how many bricks it spawned by adding the result to our brick count variable. Rather than just setting the ladder to the value of the former, we can factor in multiple brick spawners in a single level. Okay, sure. I mean, we don't have a brick spawner, but that's okay. That's okay. Add. Uh, where's our brick count? There it is. Get brick count. Shoot. Okay, bricks plus the brick 
plus brick count and then set the brick count. There it is. Good. No errors. What did he call this? I don't know if uh, um, get unset brick count for the level. Yeah, and brick count is always per level, so I don't have to say per level. Finally, we can just have our brick called brick destroyed on the player state before it dies. And then because now we have this event in the player state, it'll tr uh, the player state will catch it. Note that we're keeping this distinct from scoring, as we'll also want to be able to update score points without modifying the brick count. Yeah. BI ball impact to do once. Okay, let's go back to your BP. Brick. Not the ball, but the brick. Where's the damn brick? Yeah, no. Herr Milton Shields are eat. Oh, nice. Which faction you choose? Starter content maps level snapshots uh, interfaces. Wait a minute, where's my damn? Oh, actor BPs. Yeah, BP brick. That's where I put it. Okay, so event BPI ball impact. So we already have it. See, but um, we're keeping this distinct from scoring. Oh, okay. So we're gonna do it a, a second time. Okay. Amazon 126 said, this time around I'm going for Mr. House Law. Thank you for the follow up portal. Thanks, Amazon. <laughs> uh, oh, so you're playing uh, Fallout New Vegas too. Um, oh, thanks at Amazon 126. Dunbrine is also playing Fallout New Vegas. Oh, and thank you, um, uh, Porto. Ah, uh, Porto. You followed. Um, I'm just curious. Has this damn thing come out yet? Still hasn't. I'm I'm waiting for a uh, portal RTX portal with RTX to come out, and it still has not come out. See. It's not here. Well, it'll let me know when it comes. Free DLC coming November 22nd. Hurry up! Yeah, we're gonna do a... Uh... Nah. House always wins, dead side. <laughs> House always wins, yeah. Oh, did somebody... Uh... Did somebody... <laughs> Attack me here. Let's let's duel Mr. Milkman. Uh, five hundred. Exclamation mark duel at Mr. Milkman five hundred. And that's how you duel each other, and then you bet. And it's kind of random, but I mean, one, there's only one winner. Yeah, we can have our brick called brick destroyed on the player state. Note that we're keeping this distinct from scoring. Oh, distinct from scoring as well, so I want to be able to score points without modifying the brick count. Okay, I see. Okay, so we already have... Oh, we don't have a do once. Destroyed. Yeah, but where is brick destroyed? So we have BI score update destroy actor um, brick uh, destroyed. There it is. Yeah, brick destroyed. BI after the BI BPI score update. 
And then he has destroy actor way out there, but I don't think we need to do that. Uh, score update with the points value, yes. And then BPI brick destroyed, get player state. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There we go. I don't know if that's going to work, but why is there a do once now? Event BI ball impact. Do once. Score update. Destroyed. Also with size and fortune. Sure. And then he has destroy actor way at the end. So let's uh, let's detach these. See, he changed this on us. He never told us he did that. I mean, why not? We might as well do it too, right? Start closed. Do we have to start closed? Dunbrain forty seven said, define unreal. Hmm. Elder Colvey House said, whoops, Baja. Exclamation mark defines hard. Oh, now it's working. When one attempts to fart, but should have simultaneously adjusted whilst farting is in. I know it happens to everyone that you just shart it to make an excuse to go home and change your undies. Well, that's a good definition of shart. When, when shit is simultaneously ejected. I never thought of it that way. Okay, BI brick destroyed. And then destroy after. I think we've got everything in order now. Yeah, yeah, everything looks good. Crimis Oliver 1993 said that then Green 47 was about to type it. <laughs> Brick tracking. Yeah, I guess that is all about brick tracking, huh? Let's just do that. Okay, now uh, back in the player state, eh? Okay, now we're back in the player state. Mmm, a legal addictive stimulant. <laughs> Hang on, I need to get coffee. You said coffee, so now I need it. Define donut. Ha 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 ha. the way if anyone's wondering like does it really take this long to do game development well you know we're still learning the, the interface and the more we think like uh, C++ programming uh, you know like translating these blueprints into programming then the quicker and quicker I'll be able to build level I mean I'll be able to build games right. you know like we had to learn what the, what a game instance is we had to learn game mode player state all that stuff but now it's 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 already becoming easier. One game at a time, right?
Okay, let's let's keep working. We shall keep working. Can you hear uh, music in the background? We're now on Somerset. I mean, it should be very, very light, but you should still be able to hear it. Thirty-eight forty by twenty-one sixty. Okay. Uh, yeah, bi brick destroyed. Now, what are you saying? In the player state, we use that call to decrement the brick count each time a brick is destroyed. If the result is zero or less, we update the game instance with our lives and score for storage purposes, and then we load the next level. This is where we reduce it, see? Okay, so uh, back in the player state. We're back in the player state now. Um, and we call this, uh, yep. Okay, that was a little wrong, but we got that now. Okay, so now the BP brick and then the player state. There we go. So BPI brick count update. Is this what? No. There it is, BI brick destroyed. We do not have the concept of a brick destroy being destroyed here yet. Good. Let's implement the event. Define brick. Elder Calve House said, Of course they're going to mention uh, drugs. I knew that. Let's see if Taco Bell is fixed. It's probably going to still be the, the wet floor signs, right? Define Taco Bell. Exclamation mark to find Taco Bell. I want the Mount St. Helens one. Yeah, there it is. Jeez, what's with me in drug left? Bahaha, there it is. We bahaha ha 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 What to eat if you want to turn your ass into Mount St. Helens? <laughs> Why Mount St. Helens, you ask? Because it turns your shit into liquid explosive that blasts out your assholes. <laughs> we have to we have to go into Urban Dictionary. So this is all from Urban Dictionary. Hmm, let's maybe I think you have to do Define in and out. Exclamation mark define in and out. Damn good food, and just that is in driving car in and out burger. Hell yeah. Okay, let's tell the player state what to do when the brick is destroyed. So we're going to decrement, decrement an integer. See, and that it creates that node right there. This is minus. It's the same thing as minus. And then we have our brick count already. So we get the current brick count, decrement that by one. And now, see, now it's one less. And then we, and then if, 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 if it's less than zero, less than or equal to zero, Yes, yes. Less equal there. Less than or equal to zero, then that means all the bricks have been destroyed. If um, and the condition is then, if it's true, then we're going to update the stored data because we have to update the stored data in the game instance because we're about to end the level. But, what, but I call it persistent data. Target is BPI framework. I don't know if that's correct. Get game instance. 
return value. No, that's not correct. Update persistent data. Maybe it's the function. BP player state bat. That's not right either. Okay, BP uh, update store data, update persistent data, update persistent data, get game instance. There's only one game instance, get game instance. That's a widget. That's not what we want. Well, maybe if we, here, update persistent data. See, now it doesn't. Crimis Oliver 1993 said, accidentally brought a whole two liter of Sprite in my room. Thought it was a seltzer. Got it, got it, it's a message. Accidentally brought a whole two liter of Sprite in my room, I thought it was seltzer. Elder Colve House said, I buy seltzer every Amazon grocery delivery. Dunbrain47 said, yikes. Yeah, I buy a seltzer all the time myself. <laughs> Define Sprite. <laughs> it's it's it, a delectable lemon-lime beverage. It has possibly the shortest half-life. <laughs> half-life. A fizz half-life. Okay, so ing there. Uh, whoops. There. But then we need to, yeah, player lives, player score, which is, it's actually current score. Current lives. Current lives. Current score. There. Okay. And look what I almost did. I almost sped score into lives and sped lives into score. Wonderful. Wonderful, Daniel. Okay. That would have been a really interesting bug. <laughs> Probably would have taken me two hours to figure out what I did there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we need a target? Yes, we do. We need the game instance. Oh boy, did I screw that up. Nope, nope, I... There, update persistent data. We don't have that. There, this goes into here. Update persistent data. Okay, BPI update persistent data is a message... is a message in the bottle to the rest of the world. And we broke there it. we go. True. Into here. Lives. Score. There we go. That's more like it. Yep, that's it. That's it. Ooh, this sounds fun. It's it's the Elder Scrolls Online Somerset soundtrack. Get the game instance. Did we do that right? Yeah, get game instance into the target, and then the branch goes right there if it's less than zero. If it is not less than zero, then don't do anything because it's already updated. See, it's updated the brick count locally, like within the player state, and that's, we don't need to update. See, we don't need to update the game instance every, every time. We only do it if it hits zero because we're about to hop levels. And if you hop into another level, you have to store this data so it, it can persist at the next level. That's why we do this. The only problem, we have neither the concept of a next level or any actual levels to load. Okay, let's quickly knock out a few levels. Okay, fun, right? Imagine how painful that would have been. Elder Colve House said, okay, level time. Okay, we're going to make uh, another level. So let's actually, let's just uh, flesh this level out a little bit. Okay, uh, I want to...
I want to commit this. Uh, git commit m um, added um, the count updating uh, just before adding second level. There it is. That's what we're doing there. Okay, good. And then that commits it. Uh, oh, why not? Let's push origin. From the result of the 1,993 set. There we go. Slots 500. Uh, this thing I didn't need to do until the end of the night, but I pushed it anyway. And that pushes it up to GitHub. So now it's in GitHub. See? HTTPS, GitHub, simple shorts, tiny game 3. Okay, let's, uh, let's fix this. Let's add some brickies. Um... I know this looks weird, but let's just leave it for now. We're going to update the visuals. We'll update visuals soon, don't worry. We'll update visuals soon, don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. Why is this not lined up the same way? Dunbrain 47 said, okay. Oh, it's a... Well, of course the other snapshots reference it. Why would you have to tell me that? I mean, of course they do, duh. Zero. Okay, now that's right in the center. And then this is, the Z is up. Let's do uh, 1350. Okay, now if I do this, then we get a nice, yeah. Okay, sorry, with how many bricks on level one? We could do, um, could start with just a few, you know, so as not to overwhelm the player, just to get the player used to uh, the game. And we could start with uh, uh, huh, 200. This seems off center. It is off center. Huh. Yeah. Wait a minute, what? What? Nine by nine. No, my blueprints broke everything. Zero Look, lives now. zero, zero. Assholes. So it's it's a check it's keeping track of the score, but now uh, lives broke. I don't know why that just happened. So um, what we'll, we'll fix that later. Crimson of the one thousand. Oh, I know why. Three said so hardcore mode. I know exactly what's going on here. Um, see the pivot is wrong. The pivots are all in the wrong place. Best way to, to to fix that is to um, we can't change the pivot in the uh, in the this itself, can we? No, see, there's no pivot. The fuck, man. Yeah, there's no pivot. Doesn't let me do it. It's because you have to change the pivot in the level. Okay, so uh, modeling and then pivot. No, don't put the modeling over there. God dang, the hell, man. Let's put it here where it belongs, over there. Modeling. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, this goes there, there, like that. Pivot. Then I just select pivot. Where's pivot? Oh god, that's fucking goddamn thing. Oh, there it is, pivot. 
and then now we're going to center. No, no, I don't have the right one selected though. There, pivot. And then I'll, no, no. <sighs> PB break board. Cancel. Okay, there we go. See, now we got the pivot and that's in the wrong place. Good. So pivot and then center. Yeah, that's a bug right there. Now, does that, uh, Center all, yes. Yeah, see, then that changes all the pivots. See, so now they're all changed. Good. There, now it's truly in the center. There. Good. Okay, so now we'll nine by nine. Elder Covey House said nine by nine. Do -do 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 -do. Let's keep them really close together like that. That's a lot of bricks for the first level though, Dun Brian. Could we do like um, a smaller number? Dun Brian 47 said, I meant three by three. Oh, three by three. And that seems like too few. Well, well here, tell me what you think of this. We need to make it easy to do the breakouts, right? Just tell me what you think of this. Oliver 1993 said, five by five. Whoops. Five by five. Herr Milton Shields I eat, ten ball go between bricks. Okay, how about six by six? Right in the middle box. Okay, let's do six by six. A three, four, five, which means that they'll have to be offset. Uh, but now if it's six by six, then um, it'll have to be offset just, just the right amount. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay, uh, and then all the bricks that are currently on the freaking TV screen. Yeah, like that. Now we have to move it over. Now let's not move it over yet. It's six by six. There. Okay. And now Don't let's press down so but flip low. Okay, and then we'll group them together. There we go. Now and it groups it right in the center. So now we just uh <clears throat> Uh, zero, Y zero, zero, zero. Nope, 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 you, you, you. I don't know how to get, how to get the uh, transform for the whole group. Yeah, that's something we're going to have to investigate. Like, see, this is the transform for each individual one and it says multiple okay but how do i get it for the group see like i can't just click this uh, there i know there's a way to to do it i just don't know it yet okay so see and then if i do this it doesn't change or update anything okay let's see now hey i like this yeah see because you could you can trigger oh, Remember, our lives are broken, so we're going to have to fix that later. Yeah! Okay, so so the, the breakouts are happening easier. Good. Elder Colvey House said, Actually, how about five by five? Yeah, the first level is, is really, really has to be easy. 
Okay. That's all. Okay, now. Wait a minute. No, I just seven said. Okay. I just deleted something I wasn't supposed to. Wow. Okay, now we're gonna delete. There we go. Oliver, one thousand nine hundred and ninety-three said what? I deleted the sky. Oops. Yeah, I deleted the whole sky. That whoops. Okay. Um, okay, the group. Actually, they're not grouped now, so I have to regroup. Triple A. Regroup. Group. Ding. There. And uh, I don't let again. Let's get the left going. Can I actually see what I'm doing? Yes, I can see. There it is. Now it's right in the center. Okay. Bonk. Five by five. Yeah, there we go. Good. Yeah. Yeah, and that way, I mean, we still have to fix that issue, but um, what I really want to do is fix. Okay, so there's level one. Now let's do, um, now we're going to duplicate this. Well, before we do, we have to count how many. Oh, no. It's screwing up. Oh god, it's screwing up. I don't like it when it screws up. Brick one by one, and then level one auto one. Save level. And let's yeah, save selected. I don't know why it's doing this. Save current level. Save brick. She's files to save. Bonjour. <clears throat> hey. Um this is a this is a auto save, so let's not save it. Okay. Oliver 1993 said, sounds like the hardware store, something screwy. Elder Kobe has said, ha ha ha. Um. Tiny game three. Okay, now, now we go right back into it. Uh, and then we're going to build the second level. We'll build a simple second level too just to get this going. Okay, so there's our level one. Um, the total number of bricks is five by five. He's five feet tall and he's five feet wide. Five, so that's twenty-five. Done. Bring forty-seven. Said okay. Total bricks in the level blueprint. Remember, I have a total bricks, and now it's twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, level two, and now we duplicate this level. Okay, there's level one. So I actually do have a level two. I was just farting around. Let's destroy it. Yeah. Okay, uh, level one and now level two. We're gonna duplicate. It's gonna be level two. Amazing. Why does it keep doing this? Oh yes, because it's the first time. It's the first time we've seen level two. Good. Perspecto. Let's actually um, add another window. Yeah, there's our second viewport. There, there. Okay, 
And now, uh, lighting needs to be rebuilt. Nine hundred ninety-three said, question, will there be extra balls in a level after you break a few bricks and they escape, causing you to hit multiple balls? Oh yeah, we can extend that later. That's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, because uh, currently everything is um, like tied to one paddle and one, one ball. Currently everything depends on one ball, one paddle. We can extend both later. Okay, so um, now this is level two, right? We're on level two, yeah. So uh, level two is going to be a little different. Um, let's. Um Am I driving at the moment? Not yet. Getting license again. Damn it, Mr. Milkman. Okay, what to do for this level? Uh, one thing I wanted to do is adjust this spline a little bit. I really wish that wouldn't pop up. How do you how do you make this not pop up? Because it's in the way. Um, so here's the spline. Um, what I'd like to do is um, curve this. Oh, yeah. How did you find driving when you did were you safe and found it easy? Yeah, I learned in Michigan. We're very good drivers there. Yeah, we're we're damn good drivers in Michigan. Not like California where everyone's just crazy. You should see these crazy drivers. And now we have to get this exactly to match this. So if this is um, location 35, that can't be right. No, no, spline. Yeah, the spline position. Always remember to use your blinker. Oh yeah, the spline position is negative 650 and 50. Negative 650 and 50. So this is going to be 650 and 50. 650 and 50. <laughs> with metal contraptions crashing into each other yes, yeah wanted... yeah use your blinker always um, okay now we have to somehow tell this to be at this position arrive tangent uh, 1100 leave tangent is that what's changing yes 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 exactly 47 said sounds about right so the arrived tangent is 1100 and negative 400. So this has to be, what, negative 1100? I'm going to speed up 10 miles over the limit. What more do you want? I guess it, oh it is yeah it is there we go there we go that's what I wanted okay now let's just see what happens whoa did you see that look well now it goes back to level one 
but um, here let's let's save that save all and then okay now and then well that's cute yeah that's kind of what I wanted but now we just have to bring the, the bat up just slightly right and we have to shorten we have to shorten the spline a little Okay, so the the spline is currently at what was it again? Negative six fifty. My general rule of driving: if I can't see your headlights, you're too damn close. Elder Colvey House said, yeah, exactly. Tailgating idiots, completely thoughtless, clueless humans driving metal around. Uh, that's what I think. That's what I think of drivers around here. <laughs> okay. And then the whole thing, now that we have this, we have to take like, I think the whole bat needs to go up a Can little bit. Can one Can one level be inverted? I mean everything inverted. Now let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's still, you know, the spline is still too uh, wide now, but we'll we'll shorten it. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of fun. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's that. Now we're just going to we're going to change the configuration of these bricks a little bit. Of metal, mostly plastic these days. I have an idea. Let's do this. Clonk. Oh wait. I please tell me I didn't. Did I kill the cloud again? Ah, <laughs> true. There's that, and then let's, uh, should we bust this out? I, I was going to do this. This is what I wanted to do is um, this, and then just, whoops. Let's get this back to, what was it, 50? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, like that. And then over here too. I haven't seen a manual in a long time. How many are these now? 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, see, so we're not going to have many more bricks than the first one. We're just giving them more opportunity to do breakouts to brick and blackers. Okay, and then shoop, there, there we go. Okay, we've got our level two. Oh yeah. Okay, now the way to simply count these is to just uh, group all of the bricks together, and then it will tell us how many we have. Thirty-one. Got five bars. That's locked. Hrok. Thirty-one. How could that be? I don't see 31. I see 30. Okay, let's see. 3, 6, 12, 14, 16, 18, 24, 30. So why does it think there's 31? What did we do? How did we screw this up? Now, actually, let's do BP brick, and then it should say 30. There it goes, 30 out of 36. But it counted the group itself. Okay, got it, got it. <coughs> All right, now if we, okay, bonk, cut in. This might throw people off. It seems like there's too much of a, yeah, there, there's a little too much of an angle. 
so we so I'll fix the angle a little bit but let's let's just make sure that this is playable well it's it changed back to level one again because I got destroyed there oh now that's cool if you start at an angle so does the ball of course it does okay bonk ding there we go breakout yeah this seems like a fun level yeah and then you know it's still not difficult it just takes a little while to get through it see bonk dude there we go all right so we've got our two levels now um and we we have to now that we have our two levels we are we have to store the list of levels okay um now we can head back to the game mode where we'll store our list of levels. Since the oh, and we have to tell that. Hang on, we have to modify this and say that our brick and blockers, our total bricks for level two are thirty. Remember that we have to change this to thirty. There, screwy way of doing it, but hey. Okay. Uh, Come on. We head back to the game mode where we'll store our list of levels. Okay, so we go into our game mode, BP game mode. Remember, the game mode won't persist data unless you create it in as variables in the game mode itself. See? Yeah. Uh, we do have, I don't think we have any variables except default scene root. Since the list itself is static, we don't need to keep that in the game instance or player state. See, it's like it never changes. To do so, we need to create a name variable, turn it into an array, essentially a list of variables of a specific type, and enter all of our level names. That's all you do. Next, we need to create two more functions of BI Framework, which is an integer named update level. Elder Colvey House said, a lot of this is broken, Jesus. In the game instance, create an integer named current level and leave the default zero. See, and then all that stuff happens. Okay, 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 okay. First of all, we need to make sure that we're counting the bricks. So before we even do that, let's do a output and make sure that we're actually counting the number of bricks. See how this decrements it? And then uh, get game instance, update persistent data. Yeah, I want to see, I want to find it out here. Print string, and then we're going to append. Um, the brick count, brick count. Append string, append. String append. Uh, the brick count is here. Yeah, that's fine. And then uh, we'll say brick count. And then we'll make it. Then the return value goes into the end string. And then we need to do this. There. What a mess. And then let's uh, make it. Let's do key, um, yeah, let's give it a key, and then five seconds, ten seconds, actually. And then the, the, name, the brick will be red. Yeah, let's do a deep red. I said, there. Okay, now let's play and see if we're, 
we have to look at the we have to look up here and see if it's remembered there brick count negative one brick count negative two brick count negative three so we are remembering how many bricks but it started at the wrong brick count see started at the wrong one Elder Calve House said, Veil. Holy Bob starts and pop titty comes splashing blood flubbing flippy diddy flapping flu. Listen in here and I will fix the broken lives data and broken initial brick count offline. Dumbbrain 47 said, okay. Okay, does everyone understand what I'm going to do offline? So we have two issues. You know, first of all, we have zero lives and there's supposed to be three. So that blew up. And then also we are counting the number of bricks we break, except we're starting at zero. See, so now it's negative three, negative four. Do you see it over there on the left? Negative six, negative seven. So we're not, we're not passing the total number of bricks properly. Um, so we need to do that, and we will do that next time. I mean, I will fix that offline. Because some of this stuff, it just takes too long on camera. You know, like I could be here for hours. Um, uh, let's just do our git um, status and find out what we added. Yeah, we, we added level 2, we added brick 1 by Ron. Yeah, we changed all that, so that's good. Okay. Get commit. Um, um, two levels, but um, lives broken. Uh, total brick, total bricks per level broken. Okay, there. So now we're kind of we're sort of tracking, you know what, where we're uh, committing each of these. So yeah, that's good. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, I know these uh, uh, these might be a little boring for some people, but I'm having fun building the damn thing. You know, each of these games, I'm having fun building them. The, I promise the tutorials that we work on from here on out are going to be really tight. Like, if I start running into problems with any of these tutorials, I'm going to ditch it. Uh, you know, we're never going through this mess again. Uh, this is just a train wreck. Um, okay, let's do end credits and then we're out of here. Uh, let me turn the display capture off. There we go. Ah. This is much calmer, isn't it? Here's the wonder of the events. I, I'll also redisplay the um, current state of the event browser. What is this? Um, yeah, a Porto, Young Na oh, Youngish, Youngish Line. Hey, we had some nice follows tonight. Yeah. Um, I think it was follows tonight, right? Yeah. Oh, and if anyone would like to join the Discord. Elder Colve House said, Discord. Ninety nine at Dunbrine forty seven at Crimes over nineteen ninety three at Almost one twenty six at Evan Stevens and all lovelies. Yeah, young oh young ash line a portal next next one. All right, thank you guys, and we will see you next time. Uh, it's going to be Sunday. We'll we'll stream games on Sunday. We'll stream games on Sunday. In fact, I'm not sure what I'll stream. I might actually start, well, at Portal 2. I mean, if the Portal RTX comes out, we start that Sunday. But if um, otherwise, we might actually start <laughs> my nervous den. We might start my nervous den on Sunday. And that's with RTX effects and everything at the bottom of the sea. 
Okay, thanks for watching. Let's see if there's anyone we can raid. I don't see any 